Now, along with the internal strains in his coalition, Prime Minister Netanyahu faces the prospect of, again, of widespread protests across the country tomorrow. As his government will look to advance its divisive overhaul of the judicial system as Parliament reconvenes Wednesday. Now, along with the now expected demonstration outside the Knesset in Jerusalem, protesters are promising a, quote, day of struggle that could disrupt travel and other normal working arrangements tomorrow. Well, for more on that, we're joined by our uh, political correspondent, Bacha Leventhal. And Bacha, what can we expect tomorrow? It sounds like even a, a uh, uh, more severe version of what we've seen in the past couple of weeks. Right, so we're talking about when you mentioned the past couple of weeks, seven weeks in the running of these protests. Well, I mean the big ones outside the Knesset. Right, that no one thought were going to last as long as they have, but this is actually a nationwide strike, and what we're looking at is what they're calling a day of struggle, a day of disruption, and they're saying, at least the protest organizers, that they want to disrupt the movement and the flow of public life tomorrow in order to show how badly they believe the government is disrupting the democratic flow and life in the state of Israel. And so basically what that means is at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning we're going to be seeing both parents and students protesting at various educational um, and schools facilities all across the country we're then going to see that moving slowly down at least into a lot of the teens protesting as well that's then moving down to the area in Tel Aviv known as Sorona which is downtown Tel Aviv where we're going to be having the high-tech protests that's then moving to around 2 o'clock in the afternoon when we're going to have hospital protests of medical officials coming out of the hospital hospitals in order to protest this and the whole day is sort of going to culminate at Benjamin Netanyahu's house in Jerusalem which we know they've already written a note to the police to say that they are demanding to be closer to his house and not put so far away from the barriers in terms of the proximity to where his home is. They're really saying that they want to disrupt as much as possible and something that was quite interesting at least to me when seeing the roots of these protests is that there is going to be an INSS tomorrow, a national security, the Institute of National Security here in Israel, a conference that is going to be held by Yoav Gallant, the defense minister. And the protest is, guess what, taking place right outside the venue that they've decided to hold. And the topic of that specific protest is teaching the defense minister of Israel what security really means. So they very much are coming out and saying we are in total disagreement of the fact that Israel is going ahead with its second reading of the judicial overhaul. Right. We're trying to put a stop to that. If you'll remember, the same thing happened a week ago on Monday when they passed the first part of that reading. Israel's laws have to go through three readings. We know that once the first one passes, the second and the third is imminent because it seems like a blitz reading, especially with a coalition like this that's used to such quick uh, passings of laws. All right, sounds like if anyone's planning to, to uh, travel in and around Jerusalem and Tel Aviv tomorrow, they'd be wise to stay in place, workplace or home. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned before, Abi Maoz, the, you could argue the first defection from the Netanyahu government, though he says he's not going to work to break it down. We are seeing some uh, real divisions develop here. Uh, we'll have to see how uh, that plays out. And of course, the protests, let's hope also if roads are blocked tomorrow, that we're not going to see uh, serious clashes between the protesters and police. Uh, of course, government, some government officials calling on keeping the roads open. But Leventhal, thank you for that.